So we have renamed this kind of group. Um, as most of y'all know, this, this really was founded as the hour long orientation that we would do before each of the monthly iDignity events um, to try to you know, train newbie volunteers, but also give some of the background of, of what iDignity is and our values and our mission and things like that and updates. And so that's what this has morphed into um, because we're no longer allowed to safely be able to have the large assembly events and it's probably not going to be that way for the any foreseeable future. Uh, this kind of organically grew out of that. We want to keep up the momentum um, of these relationships. Um, it's interesting, I was listening to a sociology professor just a couple of days ago talking about one of the most destructive things about uh, the pandemic is the loss of secondary and tertiary relationships. And those are the fabric of our society. You know, we're still connecting with our family and our really, really deep friends, but these secondary and tertiary ones. And, and that's what, you know, iDignity community had adopted into it. It's some really, really important relationships and we want to do everything we can to maintain those. And honestly, the, the staff just really, really likes to see you all. Um, and it's just really encouraging. And so we want to also just invest more time in this. So this is the uh, iDignity mission check-in, uh, not a big adjustment from the day. Uh, but it's it's slight, and there'll be other adjustments coming on. Um, we're going to try everything we can do to keep it to the 30 minutes that we promised. Um, so we'll do it what we can for that, and then the staff will stay on afterwards. If anyone wants to say anything additional to staff or have any additional or personal questions, some of the staff will stay on after that 30 minute time. Um, we're going to start with a moment of prayer. We're going to uh, have a moment from Ann Taylor just talk about some sponsorship. Got a great client story coming from Tom Pratt. Um, Danielle's gonna do some uh, announcements, some volunteer opportunities um, and the Golden Ticket Award. Uh, and then I uh, believe Rashad is in there somewhere, but I might have missed him. And then I'll do a little closing quote. Um, so that's it. I am going to pass the baton to Pastor Doug with uh, Trinity Lutheran Church. Please open us in prayer. Uh, you got to unmute yourself, though. God hears you, but we can't. How about that? No? There you go. Great. Um, with this being Black History Month, uh, one of the things we celebrated a, a few weeks ago was uh, Martin Luther King Day. And um, um, I had the privilege when I was in another position uh, traveling into the Atlanta area where we got a personalized tour of uh, the church where Martin Luther King uh, preached from and really started his ministry from. Um, his, it was Elvita King, I believe, as uh, I recall, who gave us the story of young Martin. And she told the untold, untold story of the importance of the upbringing of Martin Luther King and his siblings. And it was his mom and his daddy who uh, she talked about as being the real heroes and the ones who laid a foundation for such a, a man uh, uh, who would later take the pulpit and lead a nation in, in much of what we've seen today. And so I uh, would just like to say that uh, for the work that you do and the work that you as parents do, um, I wanna uphold that and say it was the unsung heroes of moms and dads who are lending a hand to God's creation and our the uh, smallest and yet the most effective fighting force in proclaiming the gospel. Now, for the things that iDignity does in this prayer time, one of the best things is for giving you an identity, for giving individuals an identity. But Paul is one of the authors that talks a lot about children of God. And so in this prayer, I'd like to have us think, however, into the Revelation, or excuse me, 1 John 5, and uh, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. That is an identity issue of identity and who we are as a, children, as a child of God. And us helping that as a parent, but also as a personnel of identity is very, very important to give them the dignity of understanding also that by belief in Christ, they can and do possess eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, it continues, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. 
the bit that I know of homeless and homeless ministry is there's a, a voiceless concern. And so our prayers are with the voiceless and that they have a, an ear of the uh, almighty God. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we've asked in him. So we have an identity and we have a God who hears and answers prayer. So let's pr turn to him in prayer. Lord and Savior Jesus, for the work of laying foundations that uh, each of us are involved in in various ways in this culture and society. May we each take our place at the table of life and be able to bring those blessings to bear to your children helping them to have an identity, but foremost, an identity as a child of your, of God. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you would help us to be a part of that plan of spreading that good news. And also a confidence that we can turn to you in prayer, be it for this board, for this committee, be it for this ministry, but especially for the individuals of this ministry, that we can have a confidence that we have toward him. If we ask anything according to his will, you, O oh God, hear us. And we know that if you hear us, we have whatever we ask, if we've asked it in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, bless us this day. Bless this meeting. Bless those whom we seek to serve. And we ask your blessings of provision to be upon I dignity and to mar help them to march forward in the ministry you've set before them. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Remember your role. Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate that. Uh, Ann Taylor. Unmute. Good evening, everybody. I wanted to thank Trinity Lutheran for being, for being a longtime sponsor. Trinity Lutheran Church is one of our founding churches. I Dignity was founded by five downtown churches, and they were on the first team. So thank you, Pastor Doug, and to everyone. Wait, give a wave if you're from Trinity Lutheran Church. Thank you to those people today for, for being here. I also want to introduce to you Anna Marie, who is our sponsor. Uh, Anna Marie has a great story of how we got engaged, and they sent us a very generous check in January. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Anna Marie. Hi, so I'm Anna Marie. I work with Samaritan Mortgage Group, powered by Movement Mortgage. So a little bit of background on us and how this donation came to be. About a year and a couple months ago, we started a program because we really felt like we needed to give back. Um, anybody can get a mortgage, you know, you can give mortgages, you can give loans, but we wanted to give something back more than that. So we started donating $200 of every closing um, back into the community. So the way that we built that was every quarter we choose two charities and then the borrower chooses which charity they'd like their donation to go to. And the way uh, I dignity got started with us was we actually had a coworker a while ago who worked with you guys. And that's kind of how we heard about it. But it makes sense for us because, you know, when you get a mortgage, the number one thing we ask you for is your ID and then your bank statement. And you can't get a bank statement without your ID. So it kind of just made sense. Um, the whole team voted and you guys were the winners for the fourth quarter of 2020. Um, so what that means is that our clients chose, it was you and then Quest, uh, Quest and you, we donated $11,000 to you guys. So that was exciting. Uh, we wanted to do an in-person volunteer uh, event as well, but obviously you guys are not doing them right now. So this is kind of how we found that middle ground, but that's just a little bit about us. Just keeping it short so you guys can stay under your 30 minutes. Thank you so much, Anna Maria. And thank you for the whole team over at Samaritan Mortgage. We appreciate all of you and all that you've done for our dignity. Thank you for having us. I appreciate you guys. All right. Thank you, Anna Maria. Um, Tom, Brad with us who's that my story <laughs> hey good morning everybody uh great to see everybody's faces i miss i miss you guys so much uh thankful for those of you who are able to volunteer either remotely or come into the office um just thank you for your continued support i do want to share a client story um just just to kind of you know uh bo boost your boost your morale and let you know that um we're still making a big difference for clients, uh, despite all the chaos and, and uh, all the things that we've really had to face uh, over the last year. Um, our client uh, story this month is um, a gentleman named Gregory Proudford. 
and we first met Gregory um, about six years ago. He was um, at the rescue mission, which is where we used to hold our events. And uh, this young man uh, was in need of uh, an ID, um, didn't have a birth certificate or, or any other documents. Um, he, he was told uh, growing up that he was born in Washington, D.C. Um, and uh, it, it, a very interesting story. His family was kind of a traveling family and didn't really actually have any uh, roots um, at the time of his birth. And so he was, he was technically born in Washington, DC, but um, he wasn't born in a hospital like a lot of our clients. Um, so there was no official record of his birth. And, and so we've literally been working with Gregory over the last several years to assemble uh, a series of documents that would allow us to prove the circumstances of his birth um, many of you might know that, that a lot of times our clients uh, don't actually have a record of their birth. And, and so, you know, we work with other government agencies to find the records that, that prove the circumstances of their birth so that we can, we can actually get them a birth certificate made. Um, and so Gregory uh, really uh, hung in there with us. Again, it took us almost six years to get his get all the documents that we needed, but, um, you know, he hung in there with us and, hey, all right, uh, there's, there's Gregory with his, uh, with his uh, birth certificate, and uh, I don't know, I don't know who that uh, crazy guy is next to him in the red shirt, but uh, he's very happy that we finally got Mr. Proudford across the finish line. He was issued an ID the day before Christmas, and so, <laughs> again, we, we, um, Gregory is just one of those examples of we have a lot of clients who have very challenging cases and, and they might take a while. And, and what I tell clients is I can't promise you when it's going to happen, but I promise you we're never going to stop working on your behalf. And so Gregory stuck in there and, and he has faced some really, um, you know, difficult situations, but he's kept a great attitude. He's kept in touch with us. He's worked with us and, uh, you know, we finally got victory for him. So just wanted to share his story. Uh, it's a great story and he's a great young man. Uh, he's finally housed and, and working and, and uh, being, being the best Gregory he can be. Yay. <laughs> awesome story, Tom, thank you for sharing. And sometimes you can actually tell that people are smiling even underneath their mask. Um, so yeah, great to hear. Uh, passing it to Danielle. All well, right. Good morning, everybody. Um, we just have a couple announcements we wanted to kind of go over. Um, the first is that it's February and February means that it's Black History Month. And uh, here at iDignity, we're, um, we're in a lot of conversations about what that looks like and how we can, um, how we can best have these, have these really great conversations. So I wanted to introduce you to somebody who many of you probably recognize he's on here today. Um, his name is Rashawn Graham. And Rashawn um, is actually a former client of iDignity when we're talking about how people got involved, right? That's Rashawn's story. Um, but he also became a staff member and an advocate and uh, and has really um, really been such a wonderful wonderful partner and connection um, in in being able to have conversations so I wanted to introduce him um, into this conversation and take it away Rashawn thank right. you for being here yes no can everybody hear me I got new headphones okay cool I got, you. Uh, <laughs> I got new headphones and I don't know where the microphone is apparently it's here somewhere but uh, <laughs> Rashawn um, if you can speak up a little bit sure um, how about now can you hear me a little better can I Good. Uh, <laughs> well, um, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Rashawn. Um, it's good to be with you. I missed you all so much. I'm sorry I've been away for so long. Um, so fun story. A couple of weeks ago, uh, Ben hit me up on Instagram and said, hey, I'm trying to do something for, um, for Black History Month, but I don't really know how to engage that conversation. I don't really know what the conversation should be. And so we talked for a little bit. And so he invited me on. And so I'm glad to be here with all of you, the whole iDigna team, once again, uh, faces I recognize, some I don't, but um, it's good to be with all of you this morning. So as I was thinking about that conversation, um, and mainly when I say conversation, I mean sort of the intersection of Black History Month and iDignity's mission. And I was thinking, well, what is the intersection? You know, what, what is the thing that kind of brings those two things together? And so in that, I wanted to speak to you 
you see, normally I speak to you as an identity client, and I will do a little bit of that, but I want to speak to you in a way that I don't typically, and that is from the perspective of a Black American. And the thing about the Black experience in America historically is that it is inextricably linked, unfortunately, to dehumanization. When you go back to uh, the slave trades where husbands and wives were sold away from each other and their children intentionally um, on through to the three-fifths compromise where Blacks were treated as 60% of humans so that way uh, their slave owners would have more representation congressionally, even into the present day where you know, I can't bring myself to do an Ancestry.com because I don't want to find out that my last name is the same as the guy who enslaved my ancestors, you know? So it is a history that is kind of fraught with that dehumanization. And I know that because that's the way it felt to be a, an identity client before I got to the doors of iDignity, you know? When, when you consider your humanity, there's a few things that you know ahead of time. You know that you're breathing for the most part whether that's with your lungs or if something is aiding you in that, or you know you know your heart is beating, right? It's all fun and games until you have to prove it, right? It's all fun and games until you have to provide your ID somewhere and you can't. So it's this moment where the thing separating you from the validation of your humanity is a piece of plastic. And so as I've been thinking about that, I was like, you know, Black History Month, what it's really seeking to do it, it's, it's more than what we make it out to be. A lot of times, um, Black History Month can be so hyper-focused on the parts of it that are really sanitary, right? It's hyper-focused on, I have a dream and the six million things that George Washington Carver did with a peanut. But it's much, much, much bigger than that. It's about honoring the lives of the people on whose shoulders I stand to the point that I can even speak to all of you today, you know? It's honoring them, recognizing them and calling them by their names, you know? Uh, to put it another way, you could say that Black History Month is all about restoring dignity and hope by providing identification. And in that way, iDignity's mission and Black History Month's mission are exactly the same. You know, I always say that uh, the Black experience in America is like holding joy and tension in both hands at the same time, all the time. And that was my experience being a staff member at iDignity. It's being really happy that iDignity exists and being really frustrated that it has to because the effectiveness of iDignity is the evidence of the system that being broken. So I don't know how to tie a bow on that. Normally I have a little action statement or something to kind of give away at the end of it, but all I have is a little more than encouragement because this is exactly what iDignity does. This is its stock and trade. It is holding joy and tension at the same time. It is providing hope, but recognizing that the, the reason you had to provide the hope was from a really, really difficult place for a lot of clients. So all I would say to all of you, if there be an action statement in all of this, is keep on keeping on, keep on holding the joy, keep on holding the terror in both hands and just continue to providing dignity because that's what identity clients want just the same way as that's what black Americans want. All we've ever wanted is to be treated like human beings. And that's what identity does better than maybe anybody. Um, so yeah, um, thank you all for uh, letting me talk this morning. I hope I'm under the three minute window. I hope I didn't go over um, and take it away, whoever's taking it away. Rashawn, awesome. that's amazing. I uh, really do appreciate it. I think you're just gonna be our, our speaker every single month, um, come up with something new, but yeah, you continue to impress me and it's just such an honor that we were, I dignity was able to positively influence your life. Um, and that, that's that joy that you mentioned. Um, and to see you now uh, exacerbates that, that joy. So thank you. Danielle. Thank you so much, Rashan. Um, we echo what, what Michael said there. Um, moving on into um, just a couple other announcements. Um, we know that many of you still are not able to come volunteer and we totally, totally understand that, right? Um, we miss you from a distance and we, we wish we could hug you and, and hang out, but, um, but know that we, we definitely understand and respect and we'll, we'll send all the virtual hugs we can. Um, if you are interested in volunteering, um, as you know, we are serving three days a week in person. Um, we have some in-office volunteer opportunities and we have some vo virtual volunteer opportunities. So if you're comfortable on the phone, um, we do have some, some 
tools on the computer that can help you kind of guide conversations with clients. So uh, just let us know. We're, we, we would be happy to, to have that conversation with you and, um, and we're happy to engage with however, however you're able to right now. And, and uh, so just let us know. Um, you can sign up at idignity.org slash volunteer um, and, and that is available. And we're, we're happy to talk with you about whatever, whatever you're interested in right now. And uh, with that, we're gonna pass it over to Anne. Once again, hello everybody. I cannot underestimate the value of personal connections. Um, Rashawn was uh, a product of that. Uh, he heard about um, he heard about our dignity at his church at the time and came to us. So yesterday, I had the privilege of speaking to the Horizon West Rotary Group, and again, that was a connection through one of our board members who connected me to the gal who sets up the speakers. And I was on the screen in front of 20 plus people who literally had never heard of iDignity and it had never crossed their mind that there would need to be an organization like iDignity. I mean, they were literally scratching their heads thinking, I didn't know this was a thing. So I just tell you that story to remind you that I am available to hop on the screen and present to a group of friends. Maybe you have a neighborhood group, maybe you have a church group, a rotary group, a, um, whatever type of group, it doesn't even have to be a group. Maybe it's your best friend that hasn't heard our story before. It's so easy um, to, to set these up via Zoom and it's impactful. So continue to think about that and you can reach me, um, email, text, phone call. Um, I'll put that in the chat, but just want to share that with you. And thank you to everybody who has made a connection because so many of you have over the years. So thank you. Uh, we're back to we're back to me. Um, so now we get to do the the fun portion of I mean it's all fun and it's all great, but uh, this one's always kind of special special. Um, we get to do the Golden Ticket Award and and uh, as you know we we do this award um, every month um, for somebody that that has really impacted um, I Dignity's clients or I Dignity as an organization or or individuals in the organization, right? Um, this month we want to uh, we want to highlight an individual um, who who many of you may may know but may not have uh, served next to at at our monthly events. Um, he's one of those people who fights inequality for individuals who are who are often overlooked. He works with um, with individuals who are homeless in the downtown area and uh, and helps advocate for them. He fights to access housing and healthcare and, and opportunities for them. Um, he knows how to connect them with organizations. He is speaking of advocates, right? He is constantly telling people about iDignity, telling them how to get access to our services um, and access to so many other organizations. He's a wealth of knowledge. Um, he works at the HOPE team um, and, uh, and you'll recognize that term because um, Brad Sefter, one of our, one of our former board members uh, also works there. And the HOPE team um, works with individuals to help them gain access to, to all sorts of services, one of, one of which being um, identification. And we're really honored to, to be a partner of theirs and to, um, and to serve, serve these individuals and help them get on their feet for, for self-sufficiency. Um, and lastly, he serves at the Homeless Memorial Service every year, and uh, he shares memories of individuals who have passed away. And we just so appreciate his personal connection that he can share um, and, and really, really connect us with individuals that, that, we're, um, that we're honoring. So, so this month, um, the person we want to celebrate is Joel Miller. He is on this phone call, and, uh, and we thank you, Joel, for, for all that you do um, for our dignity and for our community. And if you would like to speak, you are welcome to. You know, thank you so much. It's a, a great honor to be with you all. Uh, some of you I know and some of you I do not know, but um, there's no one and nothing like iDignity. Um, I'd better say because iDignity is, it's not just an organization, but it's people providing a service that is so integral to helping people uh, not only just obtain ID and maybe get jobs, but the people that I work with are the most seriously disabled people in our community. They have uh, disabilities, developmental disabilities, uh, serious mental illness, and serious physical disabilities that uh, keep them from being able to get ID and housing. And so I want to talk a second, but I want to just introduce by saying 
but I am a I dignity volunteer. I've been to many of the big events over the years, uh, the ones that were held at the rescue mission and at the Salvation Army. I've been to Super Duper's Casino Night, and I do share every year at the uh, the homeless memorial service because many of the people on that list are people that I know and have gotten into housing. I uh, I work for the Healthcare Center for the Homeless, like Danielle said, along with Brad and. I've been doing this work off and on for 20 years. This is actually my 20th year anniversary when I moved from Los Angeles to Orlando to be the first director of Compassion Corner back at First Presbyterian of Orlando. And uh, so, but I first found out about iDignity when uh, I worked with Nancy Martinez in the woods in the camps and we would drive people into town and drop them off at iDignity and they'd come out with IDs and be smiling. And it was a wonderful thing. Um, again, the people that I'm working with are completely incapable of obtaining these documents on their own. Uh, we live in a very complex society, and as you guys know, the, the difficulties in, in ordering school records, marriage records, uh, name changes, getting midwife uh, documents. I mean, it would be difficult for a person, you know, that has a full-time job in the means and a computer to do this, let alone a guy who has maybe never even had a cell phone before or doesn't know how to get on the internet to obtain these documents. And so uh, it's, it's incredible what iDignity does and there's, there's nothing else like it in the community. Um, I'd like to say that iDignity helps save people's lives. iDignity literally helps to save, plays a huge part in saving people's lives because a program that came to Orlando called Permanent Supportive Housing and a person who is disabled and has been homeless for over a year can move right into an apartment that's furnished, that has a bathroom, a bedroom, a kitchen, a television set, uh, while they've lived on the streets for many years. And without iDignity, that would be impossible because there's no way that, that uh, out or any other organization could get all those documents without iDignity. So I really believe God put iDignity in our community right at the time, or, well, I mean, iDignity 2008, permanent support, Excellent. I call you guys experts in forensic ID documentation obtainment. Experts in forensic ID documentation. And so without a birth certificate and an ID card and a social security card, we can't move chronically homeless people into the next step of housing. And so without iDignity, we, it would be a lot less people housed and people would probably be dying on the streets without iDignity's ability to get those documents and us being able to get them into housing. And so you guys, um, I wanna share a photo of a guy that was a utilizer of iDignity. His name is Larry Jackson. He wore sheets. He only wore sheets that he would uh, make kind of his own clothing uh, out of these sheets. And there he is with uh, Brad. He utilized iDignity services and he was, uh, the, the son of, of uh, fruit pickers in um, West Florida, and he pushed his shopping cart from Winter Garden, or I think Winter Haven, all the way down 50, and he lived at this, the 7-Eleven Westmore Colonial five years, and so it was a collaborative effort. We were able to get him housing, and we couldn't have done it without identity, so it's people like that, you know, that you guys helped to serve, and uh, Tom came out uh, this week and talked to a gentleman that, uh, has only told us his name is New York for the last six years. And Tom was able to sit down with him and Tom got a lot of great information out of him. And it was just incredible uh, how Tom was able to, to, to get things going. So I'm so honored to receive my golden ticket. I have it right here and necklace out of it and wear it around kind of like um, flavor Flav. No, I'm not going to do that, but thank you so much. I love iDignity. We love you as well, Joel. Well-deserved. Um... Okay, we're about to about to close out. We like to close with a quote, um, and then after that, some of the staff will remain on the call if anyone wants to ask us any questions. But we do want to let everyone off off on time, so we'll give a minute for people to jump off. But we do want to end with a quote, and uh, this one is from uh, Nobel Peace Laureate Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and it goes like this: We are made for goodness. We are made for love. We are made for friendliness. We are made for togetherness. 
We are made for all of the beautiful things that you and I know. We are made to tell the world that there are no outsiders. All are welcome. Black, white, red, yellow, rich, poor, educated, not educated, male, female, gay, straight, all, all, all. We all belong to this family, this human family, God's family. My humanity is bound up in yours, for we can only be human together. We are different precisely in order to realize our need for one another. That's Dutton. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, feel free to stay on the call, but if you need to leave, uh, greatly appreciate being here and please come back next month.